Hey there, welcome to another episode of We Make Things, a podcast about content makers and to- content creators and content marketing. I'm here with my friend, Carlos Gutierrez, Senior Creative Director at Custom Content Productions at NBC. Thanks for doing this. Of course, man. Thanks, uh, thanks for inviting me. I was, I was flattered and I, I've been listening to the last couple episodes and I really enjoy it. It's a good job, Kwan. So tell me what Custom Content Productions at NBC is and what you do with it. So uh, it, it's, it's a relatively new uh, department name. We used to be Custom Content Marketing. Now we're Custom Content Productions because we've, we've kind of melded the two worlds of, of what we did for in the promo uh, marketing department to social and digital. So we're all kind of part of one group now. So, you know, it, it's essentially any video that will end up in basically anywhere you, where you can find a screen, you know, meaning that it's not just uh, on social and, and digital uh, areas, you know, like YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, uh, TikTok. We're also doing promos that will end up on air as well. So it, it really runs the gamut. This is the first day of shooting on the Universal lot. It's no joke. Cut! Shooting in six days in LA, one day in the Windy City, and a couple more days in the greatest city in the world. New York. I had to get that in. Um, my impression that it was a lot of really high quality behind the scenes material of pilots, episodes, series. Um, I didn't know that you guys uh, did a lot of social content too. So that, that is relatively new. So, so essentially, even when, when you were there uh, working with us, our, our stuff would end up in that social world. But because it's obviously changed so much you know from you know changes year to year to be honest and it's like you know whether it's you know formats that are one-to-one or or you're doing portrait and landscape and things like that or just like the length of videos that you can put on it it's now as you know you know you kind of have to a lot of it you have to uh the the content you make has to be specific to where it ends up it it goes it kind of goes in cycles it's like you know, 16 by nine was frowned upon for so long on Twitter. And that's like, now all of a sudden 16 by nine is good again. (laughs) So it depends on, you know, so we're certainly, we certainly make our content with an eye to play on the specific platform that it's going to end up on. But in a lot of cases, it, it doesn't have to be platform specific. One piece of content can play on multiple platforms now. Absolutely. So, um, for people who don't know television marketing or anything about TV promo, Ostensibly, is custom content still kind of um, not so much topicals, but sort of a live production shot on the productions again with the interviews with the, with the actors, kind of BTS ostensibly. Is that still kind of the main content that you guys are making there? That's certainly our bigger content. So like what, what we would call like a first look is, is essentially like what you just explained, a trailer where you're having talent kind of, you know, uh, tell the story and narrate what, what, what the, the project is, you know, and, and, and just like everything, we're trying to elicit emotion, but you know, the difference being that a promo, you're going to have VO and title cards, you know, we're, you know, our bread and butter is really trying to get the talent to, to give you that emotion, to give you their enthusiasm for the project. You know, a lot of times it would be, uh, talked about as a DVD extra back in the day, you know, the things like you said, like the behind the scenes things, but now it's like, we'll see, we'll see our stuff end up on air because the audience seems to like to see the, the, the talent and the actors talk about their project. And, and it kind of plays a little bit better from a lot of ways. I personally have always loved the behind the scenes stuff. And it wasn't, uh, you know, I'm sure you're gonna ask me this, but it wasn't necessarily the path I thought I would go in the career. And like, I had no idea what I was going to do. But as a kid, I can always remember wanting to know the behind the scenes and how things were made. And I, I, I liked hearing from actors, like, I liked all the early entertainment shows, you know, like if I, I loved an actor, I wanted to know a little bit more about them and not just the character they played, but who they were. So, yeah. And it's like, I like to see the, the, the behind the scenes for sure. Absolutely. And I think like you see that, you see that kind of on, on, on air too. You see a lot of um, that kind of content on People love that stuff. And, uh, and what's interesting is I think for a producer and a director, like, you that kind of is you, you can utilize more filmmaking where you're going in there kind of like a documentary filmmaker going in there trying to elicit those great responses elicit those um the, the performances in a sense for these actors that i think probably use a lot of filmmaking muscles creating this stuff yeah i, I like to think so it's like I, I think like if you are uh you know we do a lot of interviewing of talent and so i think if you're doing your job well you're definitely 
not getting a short answer. You're getting real emotion. And that kind of takes having a real connection with somebody or, you know, the professionals will give you great answers regardless. But I think when a, when a uh, piece of content is really working is when you elicit those real emotions. And th- that tends to happen. And it's not even serious emotions. Like obviously a comedy, if like you can get that guy to be, you know, that, 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 that actor to be funny on camera, off, on the fly, that really plays really well on, on, a, on a comedy piece. Yes. So I want to get back to like the different formats and you're saying it's on, you have your stuff on social now. So if you have a piece of, um, of, of custom content, like let's say you have a, a piece of custom content for this is us, for example, like where are all the different formats that would go to? You can probably go from a part of it's on air, probably it's on Facebook, like give me, give me the whole gamut. So, yeah, I mean, so typically let's say this is us. Um, we'll start with what we, we would call a first look. The magic of this show is there's still so much story to tell, and that is exciting. This is going to be one of the biggest moments. I think it has the potential to be that, like, them them people done done it again. There are some oh boy moments where you will be a little bit caught off guard in in a really good way. I'm really excited for everyone to see the episode, but also I really can't wait to hear what everybody thinks. That that's going to preview. This is a this is in theory one of the first things that the audience, the big fans of This Is Us, are going to see to help promote the first the season of of This Is Us, and that can go from like you said, it can go from anywhere from like a thirty second cut down to on air. It's definitely going to be longer form on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, YouTube is obviously where you know a lot, they can actually monetize some of this stuff, and and Facebook is where you're getting a lot of clicks and a lot of shares and things like that. But yeah, we're going to Instagram, we're going to Twitter, we're giving it to talent for them to put on all their handles. So that's really, right. that's really powerful when you're getting like uh, uh, Sterling K. Brown saying, hey, this is uh, the, the first look of, of our new season. And then boom, you know, that thing starts going out in the world and you start seeing some real interaction from the fans. 